You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. And now it's time for the show that breaks down the options market from unusual activity alerts to market analysis, strategy overviews, listener questions, and much more. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. It's time to hit the option block with your host, Mark Longo from the Options Insider Media Group and co-hosts Uncle Mike Tussaw from RCM Asset Management, Andrew the Rock Lobster Joe Venazzi from OptionFit.com, and Mark the Greasy Meatball Sebastian from OptionFit.com. The Option Block is brought to you by Fidelity Investments. Fidelity's Option Trade Builder tool can help you confidently build an options trade in three simple steps. Just choose a strategy, select a contract, and then review the benefits and risks of the trade. Learn more about Option Trade Builder at fidelity.com backslash options. Options trading entails significant risk and is not appropriate for all investors. Certain complex option strategies carry additional risk. Before trading options, contact Fidelity Investments by calling 800-544-5115 to receive a copy of the characteristics and risks of standardized options. Fidelity Brokerage Services, LLC, member NYSC SIPC. And now, get ready to hit the option block. All right, everybody, that music means it is time once again to rock out with everyone's favorite bi-weekly option show. Yep, it's time for the option block. You guys know the drill. My name is Mark Longo coming at you live every Monday and Thursday, noon central, 1 p.m. Eastern. You can grab the live stuff via the old Mixlers if you want it just on demand. Whatever your platform of choice is, you can get it there, too. And make sure, however you listen, live after the fact, you hit us up. Questions, comments, insights, pearls of wisdom we do indeed enjoy Hearing from you guys. And joining me on the old program today, got the usual cast of characters. Let's start off. Let's go all the way up to the hinterlands of Maine, where we are joined by the one-eyed rock lobster himself, Mr. Andrew Giovinazzi from the old OP, a.k.a. the old optionpit.com. Mr. G, welcome back to the show, sir. I'm looking at some green on the water. No more snow. No more ice. Melt that away. So you're saying the reason you went to Maine now no longer exists. You're in a funk, you're telling me. The whole reason of the winter and the depression of my children is now over. They are now, um, they're getting into um, summer mode. Although there's still some snow on the ground. But we're getting, we're just following the water from the snow to the, to the, uh, to the ocean. That's you what go. you do in May. See, you you dry their tears from the melted ice rink with a little bit of uh, of some summertime fun, which I think they have for like a month up there in Maine. Ha! <laughs> and speaking of summertime fun, it's not quite summertime yet, but he's a smart man. He's getting the heck out of Dodge in Chicago here where it is has been polar vortex of late and heading on out down south to Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Who thought we'd be saying that? Uncle Mike Tusa joining us from uh, south of the border. Uncle Mike, sir, what's going on? What brings you to Puerto Vallarta, sir? Uh, just trying to get away from the Chicago area for my least favorite time of year, and that is mud season. I love the fall. I love the summer. I love the winter in Chicago area. However, mud season is not pleasant, so uh, this is probably my favorite time to get away. Plus, it's the kids' spring break. So, yeah, look, and actually sound pretty good. So maybe we need to do more shows. I think this is a hint. We need to move the whole, the whole kit and caboodle, the whole production down to Puerto Vallarta. What do you think? Think that sounds like a plan? I'm cool with that. I think, I think we got that in the budget. We'll, we'll have to look in and see. Meanwhile, let's keep on rolling. Joining us, holding down the Fidelity hot seat today on the old all-star panel, a newcomer 
to the program and indeed to the network. He is Colin Songer. He is from the Active Trader Strategy Desk East. All the different permutations and variations there. And he's on the east side over there at Fidelity. Colin, welcome to the Option Block. Uh, thank you, everyone, for, for letting me uh, join you here today. Really excited. Well, Colin, as we are wont to do with all of our first-timers here on the network, why don't you go ahead and give our audience a little bit of an overview of your background in the options and financial markets and what it is you do day-to-day on the Trader Strategy Desk East for Fidelity. So it's it's going to sound a very familiar story as Trey's um, when uh, when he was on. You know, we, we started our desk uh, initially to help out our client base who – we're struggling with the idea of come, arriving at a decision, whether it's based on you know looking at charts or or evaluating their option positions. And uh, a couple of us around here really enjoy those conversations, so we we kind of strung together, put together a desk uh, to offer up to our our clients to be able to call in with questions. And then it evolved into uh, also an educational piece as well. So kind of combine the the education piece as well as a conversational piece to help our self-directed traders to arrive and uh, analyze their, their trades. There you go. Well, happy to have you joining us as we keep on rolling into the trading block. It's time to break down the latest topics, trades, and trends in the world of options. It's time for the trading block. All right, everybody, welcome to the trading block. Let's see, what is trading? What's catching our eye? What's moving the old markets today? It's another day of green on the street. People liking what they're hearing, what they're seeing out there, trade war concerns, other things. The Fed giving us a nice little lift from yesterday as well. All of that continuing into today's action. Most of the major indices up half a percent, if not more. The Dow right around that half a percent, a little bit, maybe six-tenths of a percent level. Uh, the S&P up nearly seven-tenths of a percent. And the tech-heavy Nasdaq up nearly a full percentage point. So feeling the love out there. Worth noting as well, small caps having a pretty big day as well with the, uh, with the Russell up pretty strong as well on the day out here. Let's get that final quote. There it is. Yeah, up about 1.5% out there in the small cap. So it's been kind of just a tale of which market, which index do you follow? Where do you play? That's how much upside you're seeing on the screen today. All that upside means a little bit of downside in the vol space. VIX Cash hovering around a 13.5, which means from a vol perspective, at least, we're pretty much right back where we were on our last show. So I guess nothing has really happened in the intervening days. It's all uh, all back to around that 13.5 level. But Colin, as our newcomer, we shall start with you, sir. What is lighting up your tape? What are the Fidelity customers over there? What are they trading today over there in Fidelity land, Colin? You know, a lot of things really kind of picked up. We had, we had our usual suspects on there. Uh, but to no surprise, uh, Micron making the top of that list. Uh, you know, with releasing their earnings, really generate a lot of activity. Uh, interesting enough about that is, um, you know, right now with the price action today, it's moved away a little bit now, but it's moved up against its 200-day moving average today, which is right in the neighborhood of, of one of its uh, recent – short-term minor highs, which is back at the end of February. So at an interesting price level, and this is, you know, due to them beating uh, the, tr the streets estimates that they had out there. Uh, also, they're set to, to cut production, which was an interesting thing that they stated on there. And interesting enough, you know, when I, before uh, the market opened up, we took a look at that, uh, uh, the straddle that immediately followed the earnings date, and it looked like roughly about a $3 move, which is, which is how much it's it's been up today, which is right around that three dollar move. It was lackluster uh, in the early goings, uh, where it was uh, only up a buck sixty, but really has picked up some scene lately. Uh, another interesting one that came across and broke that top five was uh, Biogen, um, where they uh, their Alzheimer's drug has actually discontinued its phase three trial. Biogen itself is uh, taking it off the chin a little bit today. Uh, you know, it's definitely a lot of activity from our customers, and that's that's down right around 29%. So it's it's having a little bit of a rough day today. 
this is uh, creates a new 52 week low, as well as uh, you know, really hasn't been at this price level since July of 2016, which to me that's that's qu- quite a bit of time. Uh, and lastly, we've noticed that advanced micro devices also cracking that top five for what our customers are trading. Uh, that's up uh, over seven percent. Uh, on the news about its working relationship with Google coming out. So that's really what that's drawn the attention of our customers so far today. Um, so that was really interesting action that I want to share. Yeah, it's not often you see a three-figure swing <laughs> in an underlying, uh, yet you got one of those, or almost pretty much in Biogen today, off about 93 handles uh, coming into showtime, right around 29%. Still fairly lofty at 227 nearly $228, but yeah, nearly a $100 sell-off out there in that name. So uh, yeah, they've seen better days, <laughs> I, think, I, think it's, right. I think it's fair to say out there. All right, let's keep on rolling. We talked about uh, let's talk. We talked about some some volatility. So let's move on over to uh, at least what Google says is the headquarters of Option Search in the U.S., aka Maine. Uh, Mr. Rock Lobster, a man who attributes to a lot of that. What uh, what is lighting up your tape today, sir? Well, as it should be, Maine should be the option capital of the world. It certainly is the option lobster capital of the world. So uh, you know what the heck. Um, I am I am noting, let's say, a couple of things about Vol. One is, um, did this rally? Okay, so you're in the you know market prognostication. We all know you know how that's kind of a let's just call that a slippery slope. A slippery slope, we'll call it. Um, was anybody expecting a one percent move today? So if yesterday you know you go, well, we're going to rally one percent tomorrow. Um, I probably, nobody in our, especially in the option pit chat room, thought even remotely that we would be doing that. Because um, it was kind of gloomy. There's like Fed gloom. Um, you know, they're then like, it's almost like they may say they made lower rates. That's possible. I don't even know if I, it's so hard for me to decipher their minutes. But um, I don't actually think they said they're going to lower them. They're just probably not raising them this year. Um, so that's, and I think with um, this like Chinese uh, trade war thing, which and I think the Europeans are getting on board a little bit to the U.S. side, like, wow, these, these Chinese guys are really tough to do business with. So um, it's, you know, I, we rallied into all of that, right? We're rallying into all that uncertainty, you know, market climbs a wall of worry and all those little, uh, all those pithy phrases that pop out. Um, but VIX itself, like looking for, we are nowhere near our recent. I mean, we had like what I would call a, you know, a false mark for VIX cash on uh, the settlement on Tuesday morning. Um, just because, I mean, we should settle 12:35, um, and surprisingly, a bunch of people people bought actually 13 puts for 10 cents. A lot of 13 puts for 10 cents. Go figure. Um, VXXB. The, you know, what I, I would call, remember, our reliably crappy volatility product is still reliably crappy. Are you implying um, that the VIX settlement is still up to no good, sir? Is that what you're telling me? Um, <laughs> I think it's, it is still, uh, I, I think they're going to have to just change the way they settle it. Um, it's they, just the way it is. They do seem know? reluctant and to do that, don't they? They, they do. Um and I think it's really a little crap shooty because, you know, you're, you're kind of sliding into that spot where, I don't know, maybe VIX is somewhat more sensitive at some times. And I, I realize they have was like a zillion strikes. But anyway, I mean, but that 1235 print was pretty, <laughs> it was, I think it was the dead low. And then it never saw that number again. So um, that kind of stuff makes things uh, sus. But we're not we're not getting like you know that because they pressed I guess ultimately when you trade VIX you are really trading how the futures respond to VIX cash right so if you're trading this complex and you look at these things that's really what matters because all the options all the products move off the futures they really don't do much with the cash until settlement um, so there's a a lot of wiggly room in that product. 
um, or the, all those products, which is why people don't get them and they complain and they don't know what's going on because they're always trading the wrong thing. So right now, the futures are not responding, I would say, as, as well as they could for the rally that we have in SPX. So um, there's like a fair value. We have a little option for fair value and all that kind of stuff. And the, you're not getting like the vol future crush, I would say. Um, and where it's, it, it could, it could happen, but it's, it, I would say it's a very blasey sort of response to how strong the rally is to 2850 and how close that is to all time highs. Um, so there's a little reluctance in the rally from a vol point of view. Also, if you looked at the volatility of the exact out the money, it's unchanged on the day, 30 days out. So even though VIX is down, that vol really has not compressed, um, which, you know, um, you can look at my blogs and see about kind of getting underneath um, how volatility actually works in the indexes. Um, but what I like to see is real compression and volatility in the actual options. And that usually means, usually means there's a little bit more giddy up on like the speculator part, they're gonna go whack puts, they're gonna take some of that out, try to sell the 2750s, sell the 2700s, you know, try to sell that stuff. And that's all the stuff that drives all down. So um, because vol at, at strike volatility is not going down, it's, this is a not as exciting of a rally as I would like it to have, as surprising as it is. So I'm not, there's not a full vol buy-in on the rally because you don't have that, what I would just call, um, you don't have that committed speculator just whacking out some put spreads or something like that in the SPX. You know, we're talking about the, about the settlement process. That's kind of been an ongoing conversation for us. That's, that's a good question for you there, Colin, as well. You're knee-deep with the retail every day. The active folks are calling you up over there at Fidelity, asking you questions, pinging you on different options topics. Are they, have they over the past year or so, as this news has broken and you've seen the lawsuits and things around VIX, uh, has this been a point of consternation for them? Are you hearing from them saying, hey, we're concerned about trading this product? Is that reflected in the volume or is this pretty much a non-issue for them? What are you hearing over there, Colin? You know, a lot of the clients that we talk to uh, are really still struggling with the, the concept of uh, what those VIX options really are trading off of, what the pricing is based off of. Uh, this, the settlement of them becomes less of a concern for them uh, initially. Um, it, it does, in very, I'd say, few occurrences, we come across clients who have brought that up and the concerns that they have with them. But the majority of the time, they're so focused on what the pricing of those options are really based on. Uh, there is a, a large misconception of how those those particular options work, uh, that that's really where the focus of the conversation really lies with our clients. Interesting. They're still grappling with that. It's not priced off the cash. <laughs> yeah, that's been, uh, <laughs> that's been a thorn in the side of the VIX forever. I, I don't know if that's ever going to go away. That's probably, maybe, maybe the downside of, of the popularity of VIX taking off as this fear index is they never really mentioned, but it's, they don't really trade off that. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's kind of a little bit of uh, – but damned if you do, damned if you don't. Interesting to hear that they're not, uh, not that up in arms about the settlement yet. You know who is up in arms all the time, particularly when he's on vacation? Of course, talk about Uncle Mike. Uncle Mike, you're down there. You're on vacation. You're not supposed to be catching – things from the market. I, I'm guessing your, what's on your radar today is going to be a little bit of maybe, maybe some, uh, some suntan lotion, maybe a nice pina colada. Am I correct? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm in Mexico. I have red hair and pale skin. So my recommendation to everybody, a little bit of insider trading here. Uh, just kidding, of course, but uh, buy sunscreen stocks by the, by the, um, a, a lot. <laughs> so, cause I'll be using a lot of it this week for, for sure. But um, no, I think that to, right now is one of those times to where bad news is good news and good news might be bad news because in the Fed announcement, when, it, when uh, <clears throat> Chairman Pollitt talked yesterday, uh, we're saying how uh, they, they believe that the uh, growth rates for the U.S. are going to be worse and that unemployment is going to be a little bit more than what they expected. Uh, so because of that, we're not going to do any more rate hikes and the market seemed to like that or at least they have today. So I think it's one of those unique markets in that the market th – 
apparently disagrees with the Fed in that maybe they think there will be better times ahead for the economy, or they're just the market is just that afraid of the rate hike that the good news about it looking like there being no more rate hikes outweighs the potential for slower growth in the United States. So I think that's one of the, this is one of those unique markets where the Fed just has their hand in the market so much, and now they're trying to get out of it, it looks like, and the market seems to be celebrating. Now, whether the economy is going to do better or worse, you know, everyone has their forecast, but of course, no one can truly predict the future. But I think that just because of the fact that we have the Fed saying, okay, we're going to ease off on the rate hikes for right now, and uh, by doing that, uh, markets seem to appreciate that, and that ensues our rally. And of course, the fruit companies rallying yeah, a ton I was, too. I was going to say, you said no one can predict the future, but of course, you left. You forgot about me, sir. So uh, I'll, I'll forgive you uh, this time. But yeah, the fruit company uh, on fire again, up three and a half percent, six and a half handles, threatening that two hundred level. It seems like one fifty, such a distant memory. Uncle Mike, remember when we were just when we were wrestling over whether people should write those one fifty puts, and our audience was they were hand wringing. A lot of them, I think, a good portion when we polled them were worried about selling those puts. They said they might have to roll them down. There was a lot of hand wringing over that one fifty level, and now it seems like a distant memory. One ninety five, pretty much coming into showtime here. I guess the market likes the tweaked new iPads and the new earbuds too. That's why we're rallying today. I don't know. Uh, but uh, apparently Apple feeling a lot of the love out there. All the concerns of uh, China and everything else. A distant memory. We've got AirPods too. Who's worried about China? Let's see what's lighting it up broadly. It's kind of a weird market, like you mentioned earlier today. Uh, VIX not doing a heck of a lot. 110,000 contracts coming into Showtime. The ADV pushing 600K out there, so not a lot going on out there. SPY a little better, nearly half or so of its ADV on the tape, about 1.3 million contracts on the tape. The ADV around 2.6 or so. Uh, this SPX a little bit lighter, 363,000 contracts coming into Showtime. ADV about 1.2 million. Uh, the Q's lighting it up, over half a million contracts on the tape, about 676,000 is the ADV. And in terms of Trading to their ADV, uh, the Russell, a.k.a. IWM, lighting it up today. Like you mentioned, big moves out there. 362,000 contracts on the tape. That's more than their ADV, So Rus which is about 350. So lighting it up out there, excuse me, in Russell land. Let's look out here on the equity option land. Top 10, number 10, Disney, 111,000 contracts. Finally cementing that deal with Fox. Number 9, Amazon, 129,000 contracts. Number 8, Netflix, buck 32. Uh, number seven, good old Cody. Talked about them before, C-O-T-Y, 138,000 contracts. Number six, Facebook, 155,000 contracts. Number five, good old NVIDIA, 190,000 contracts on the tape. Number four, Bank of America, 221,000. Number three, AMD, 414, getting pretty hefty up there. Number two, as Colin mentioned earlier, Micron, 430,000 contracts. And number one with a bullet today, just a tick, 2,000 contracts under a million 998k here for Apple, the fruit company, dominating the tape. 65% of that coming in the call side. We've been talking about that for a while, too. It's been all call love out there in Apple. Maybe we're back to the old zealotry uh, go-go Apple days, because uh, close to 50-odd handle rally over the last month or two. So not a bad return here for those of you who are the Apple zealots. Meanwhile, let's keep on rolling. It's time to see what else is lighting up our tape with a little bit of the old odd block. It's time to break down the most interesting, unusual, and downright questionable options activity that's been identified by TheOptionsInsider.com. It's time for The Odd Block. That funky tune means it's time to get funky with a little bit of the old odd stuff that's trading today. Let's kick things off. Uh, ticker symbol JWN. No, it's not something like a jewelry or something like that. It's actually Nordstrom. I guess they do sell jewelry there, but uh, a little bit of misleading ticker if you're not familiar with it. Uh, JWN. Nordstrom Inc. Uh, trading today about 43.40, actually off on the day slightly, about six cents. Not a huge move for them, but not feeling all the love out there in the broad equity market as well. This is the name that over the past year, uh, a year ago, it was trading 47.70, so about four bucks and change north of where it is right now. It gapped up to a high over the summertime of about 67, almost 68. Looks like that was back in, yeah, that was back in November, actually. So they would hit that 
close to those levels in, in September, then sold off a bit again, then rallied again in November to that 68 or close to it level before selling off precipitously back down to pretty much the level it has been ever since, which is around this 44 level uh, since pretty much Christmas time or so. So interesting stuff out here. Let's see what the options tape had in store for Nordstrom today. And again, it was kind of a, for all the different stuff going on, kind of a quiet day out there in the broad option space. Not a lot of size prints lighting it up, not a lot of crazy stuff. But we found a few for your listening pleasure nonetheless. Uh, let's see. April 38 halves, what we're lighting it up today uh, for 31 cents, 4,652 times. They were 21 at 36, so you're leaning ask size, ask side here, I should say here, but uh, you're kind of splitting the uprights a little bit there as well. We're going to go out on a limb and say, these are definitely opening. Let's go out on a limb and say, probably this is some opening buying paper here. The next earning cycle is May, May 16th. So these do not have an earnings blip in them as well. So yeah, looking at this chart, we're kind of we're kind of at the 52-week lows, very close to it. Uh, so seeing a lot of a lot of impetus to downside puts on the buying side, that'd be kind of strange. But we've seen stranger things, Mr. Rock Lobster. What say you of this block? Uh, looks like a little bit of put love. In everyone's favorite ticker, JWN, sir, aka Nordstrom. Uh, yeah, this is the Nordstrom. I was I was looking at this. Um, I have to say, this is a little, you know. I guess my question is, why? Like, weren't they going to be taken over by management, and they're not taken over by management, and you know, an awful, an awful lot of just confusing. Um, uh, let's say confusing, confusing retail concepts and all that. Um, so my my thing on this one is it it looks kind of like put buyish, um, but not very. Um, you know, it's it's the stock is kind of like what are you buying the put for? That's I guess that's my question. Why are you buying the 38 and a half puts? It, I would think of that more as a line in the sand put as opposed to buying the put. Somebody buying, I mean, they're trying to protect stock or something like that. I certainly like it better um, that way. That's for sure. Yeah. I, yeah. I, it's I, just, it's, uh, to me, it's like a line in the sand put. You're kind of picking up the company for, you know, multi, multi, multi year lows. So is the big retailer Nordstrom dead? I, I don't think so. I mean, people like it. Um, it's got a lot of uh, customer service and stuff like that. I think. All the customer service retail seems to survive uh, Amazon, <laughs> basically. Um, but it's certainly come off since that executive, like I think the family is trying to take it private or something like that. So it, this one is, to me, it's like a head scratcher, but it, it feels like you, you would want to add like some kind of long to it. It's a, it's a little bit of a forlorn type of trade, but they're just coming out later and you know, it's it is a it's an aggressive bearish play outside of what I would call even um, you know it, it's like outside. It's so you're getting bearish sort of outside the straddle. I, I guess it could happen, but um, <laughs> yes, it could, could happen. Yes. I like it that. It could happen. Talking about damning sure, with know, faint I'm, praise. You know, I guess I guess it could. Problem. Yeah, it could happen. It could happen. You know, pigs could fly. You know, monkeys could dance. All kinds of things could happen. These puts could come in the money. Yeah, but I, I, let's let's be charitable on this guy. Let's say he's got a really good broker, and uh, he split the uprights in this guy's favor, and he's actually selling them. How about that? Right, and they and it just and they and they just totally <laughs> kicked it. So, I mean, it's a. I'm just looking. I know that the company has a lot of assets. Um, you know, it's so it could, you know, Norsham could go to five year lows. That's certainly possible. And they could make some kind of money on these plays. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> these could happen. They could make some kind of money. I think you can read between the tea leaves there, listeners, that we're not huge fans of these. I, selling them, I like them a lot better. Uh, yeah, buying puts way below the 52-week low. Again, the chart longer term could go lower. These things certainly could pay off. But uh, I think there are better ways to, to structure this sort of thing if you were indeed concerned about that level of downside. Well, let's see here. Uh, what we got next? Oh, this next one. A little company. 
You may have heard of this, Mr. Rocklops. I'm just going to maybe. I don't know. Maybe. It's no JWN. It's not as big as that one. But maybe. Op, a pull, I think, is, is how it's pronounced. It's two A's and a PL. I think it's like an ADR from Brazil. Yes, exactly. Apple. You know, it's funny when I heard that Apple might be broken up. My wife, you know, who's, who's, she's a pretty good stock picker. She goes, so what are they going to break the Apple into? Kumquats? Are they going to rename it the Kumquats? Because it used <laughs> to be seeds. Apple. Now the, the Kumquats. These are Little the seeds. Little tiny fruits. And you got baby bells. You're going to have the seeds of Apple. Yes. Yes. They have the whole Small division fruits. just for the Air the AirPods because cl- clearly the market likes them so much. <laughs> yes. I, I kind of feel like somebody in government saying, we're going to break up Apple and we're going to call it kumquats. We're going to make it a small company, mini small company. There you go. Baby bells, baby, uh, baby, baby apples, the seedlings. Uh, let's yeah, see. Or you could just go, you know, buy a phone from Google or somebody else. Yeah. Right? You know, all or these Samsung. Things, all somebody. these things happen. We won't we won't get into the uh, the, the philosophical bents of break that's to break right. up there's or not no, to break up. No venting. That's for this a separate is show. line in the sand like there's no line in the sand trade ever. Yeah, you know, it's funny. We don't really talk a lot about Apple unusual activity. Partly it's because it's such an active name that parsing through the through the through, through seeing the tr- through the trees there sometimes is a bit of a challenge. Uh, but uh, yeah, this is an interesting one that came across our radar again on a somewhat quiet day. A twenty five hundred lot's gonna gonna come on our radar, which is kind of interesting. I won't I won't insult the audience by breaking down the one year history of Apple. I think most of them probably are familiar with it. I sent today up nearly seven handles, apparently on the magical lift of the earbuds. Uh, but uh, what we saw today was looks like a little bit of the old line in the cyan action and nowhere near that 150 strike. Remember, listeners, I was talking about earlier in the show with Uncle Mike. We we polled you guys on not too long ago. A lot of you guys were concerned about riding those July 150 puts. And then here we go. I think it was it Jan. We were, talk- we were talking about Jan, I think. And here we are now, a few months later. And someone looks like blasting out the Ape 1. These are the weeklies, aspiring on the 5th, so the April weeklies. Uh, the 182 half puts, 20, about 2,500 times, for 61 cents right on the bid. You know Apple, pretty tight, 61 at 64 on these bad boys. Worth noting, the earnings or next earnings are on the 30th of April, so there's no earnings in sight for these bad boys. So he's getting the heck out of Dodge when it comes to the earnings. I don't know, Mr. Rock Lobster, everyone was hand and not too long ago about, about the 150 strike. Now our friend's coming in here and saying, bam, 182 half what could possibly go wrong with that, sir? We're at about 195 or close to it right now. How could Apple possibly trade south of 182 half, sir? I don't, I don't see it happening. They got <laughs> well, AirPods. Did you know they got AirPods, too? I know. I, the only thing I feel good about is this time when I saw, like, the ridiculous put bids go up, I actually bought some stock and didn't, <laughs> didn't screw around because I get sidetracked. and I'm like, I'm trying to overanalyze everything and just buy some what what is stock so, we don't talk about that on this show well, what, know, what is I stock? Know, I know. <laughs> it's okay but i bought some higher although now the higher buy looks lower now so it all dep- i guess depends i just if you just hold it long enough eventually things will go up long-term um, holds they're magical it's really magical um i feel like line in the sand free money put two weeks to expiration uh, and you know what? It just, you know what this also could be? We could change the name from a line of the sand put. This is a bitterness put sale. You know why? Because they're <laughs> He's bitter. Mad. They didn't buy 180. <laughs> they didn't buy 185. So they're like, screw it. I'm selling these size, and I'm going to make sure I get in this time. I like that. The bitter, the bitter apple sense. puts. I like it. I like it. I think there's a lot of our audience that falls into that camp because looking at their results, a lot of them were – we're a little concerned. I think even uh, I think even the meatball was on here around that time, saying if Apple hit 150, he was pretty reticent about selling any premium out there because he he thought that maybe structurally something would be wrong with them at that point, you know. Yeah, so, and then he turned around, he bought a fly, and he made a ton on it. I guess he changed <laughs> his colors after the show. He did. <laughs> no, 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 he bought a fly with a 210 short strike. Everybody's like, no way is it going to get there. It's like it was there in a month. <laughs> Saying one thing, doing another here on the old network. Yeah, what can well, we say? I guess, you know, he, he didn't go out there and just write the juice. He's like, I'll just take the, I'll take what I think is a good risk reward, long setup. And, you know, it was, it was a prudent long and it, and it worked out fine. So well, there you go. We'll see. But yeah, he, he definitely, I think he might've been three bucks off the bottom of that purchase. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. It works out for some people. 
out there. Let's see. Let's see if it works out for our friend here right in these puts. We'll, we'll make a little note to watch these guys and to see how our friend does. Uh, 80, 182 half listeners by April 5th. We can all remember that. Let's see here. Last up here. It's all puts. Got a string of puts here today. Uh, we're going out to Barclays this time for our final one. Barclays, if the threatening 200 level is a little bit too rich for your blood, don't worry. We got you covered. $8.36 is our final name here for Barclays PLC. Uh, this is off about a quarter, nearly 3% on the day. Let's see. Let's go back out here really, really quickly. A year ago, they were trading much higher, about 12 bucks. They got up to about 12 and a half, and then over the course of the rest of the year, it's pretty much that high was in April or so. Then it's pretty much been downside ever since, getting down to about, looks like, $7 and some change back in the nadir for just about everything, Christmas Eve, before kind of rebounding to where they are now, about 8.30 or so. So still near the downside of that 52-week trend. What was lighting it up today? Also puts and the eight puts in particular, the Ape 8 puts going up again. Looks like lifting the offer 2,500 times for 20 cents. These were 15 at 20. So there was a sitting offer there for 20 cents, maybe something in the book. Maybe a customer got excited by that. So I'll take those uh, for 20 cents. And he did to the tune of 2,527. Now, this is all opening. Earnings worth noting uh, after this bad boy as well. They're on the 25th of April. So all put trades today, all of them pretty much before the earnings announcements in their respective cycles. Uh, opening downside, kind of a similar to our first trade here in JWN, Mr. Rock Lobster. You, you like this one a little better, or is this another one of your, eh, it could happen? You, you know what? I, to be honest, there's like, okay, because you know I've got the Weimar Republic, all this all this massive you, modern monetary you, theory. You just have a big picture out, on you know? your wall, I think, of, some, of the little kid rolling the barrel of Deutschmarks, don't you? Exactly. Or Reichmarks, that, I should that say. same image. Yeah. And I look at, like, if it's a European bank, I hate it. Like, Deutsche Bank, hate it. I Now, I know it's never going to go out of business because Angela Merkel will fund the bank. So it's not going out of business. But, I mean, look at all of these European, <laughs> European banks since the financial crisis. <laughs> They're a wreck. So I'm. this is one of these where I don't really like the trade, but I hate every European bank. So this one I like a little better than the JWN, to be honest. Yeah, I agree with you. It's a little, a little better. Not a ton. I'm not, I'm not in a huge rush to go out and follow this guy, but a little bit better. Speaking of better, let's see what you guys have in store for us with a little bit of your mail block. It's time to take your seat on the all-star panel as we read your emails, tweets, Facebook messages, website comments, and much more. It's time for The Mail Block. All right, everybody. Welcome to The Mail Block. This is indeed the portion of the show where we break down your questions, your comments. This week going to be a little bit different because we are in the thick of it, the throes of it, listeners. Yes, it's that time again. No, not March Madness. Forget about that. Throw that out the window. It's the time you've all been asking us about. It's back. Our third annual Options Broker Madness Tournament of Champions. The toughest tournament in options. There can be only one. What are we doing? Yes, we are pitting, once again, the top options brokers against each other for your own enjoyment. And in the end, it's a death match. There can be only one at the end. And trust me, we've talked about it on the last show. Picking 16 Options brokers is a bit of a challenge, let alone some of you said, what about 32 or 64? Forget about it. But uh, 16, very challenging. But we got our 16 seated here. I'll break down the brackets for you. We're in the middle of round one now. You guys are all voting hot and heavy right now as we speak. You guys can find it. We kind of centralized, did a little bit different this year. Used to have voting on Facebook, voting on Twitter, voting all over the place, email and stuff. It was, quite frankly, a heck of a lot to tally. Uh, so now we still have the contest going on on all those platforms, but they all link into a central survey where we are tallying all of the votes. So that same survey link is going to be available on Facebook, on Twitter, on StockTwits, on our website, everywhere you go for our stuff via email. You'll be able to get it and get access to it and vote for your favorite broker. Maybe you like your voker, broker. Give them a vote. Maybe you hate your voker, broker. Vote against them. We're not going to judge you. Just get in there and play. The more you play, the more you vote, the more you share, you like, you retweet, the more chances you, you guys have to win the fabulous prizes. And we're going to lay out what all those are in a little bit as well. Don't worry for everyone asking, what are the fabulous prizes this year? But uh, let's break down 
the tourney first, shall we? We're in the middle of round one now. Round one goes from March 19th to March 26th, so pretty much a full week in there to fight it out for the top 16 options brokers. Let's just go in order. Let's, let's just call it the West Seed because on the left, they're on the left side. Of the of the bracket uh, here, we got TD Ameritrade taking on Sogo Trade in round one. Uh, we got Charles Schwab taking on Lightspeed Trading, a former champ uh, in another battle. We got some firm I've never heard of, Fidelity Fidelity Investments, a newcomer and upstart I think, taking on Merrill Edge. Uh, we've got Trade Station taking on Trading Block. Trading Block fighting to get into the tournament this year. Like, hey, you forgot us last year. And we said, you know what? You're right. We did. So we added them to the mix. And uh, they're doing pretty well so far. We'll have to get some updates in a little bit. We've got uh, Ally Invest, the former Trade King platform, taking on First Trade. Uh, we've got IB taking on uh, your buddies there, Mr. Rock Lobster. Trade Hawk by Trade here. So Lex and his crew over there. Tough battle for them, but maybe they could pull it out. Uh, we've got uh, E-Trade, so the former Options House and Options Monster platforms rolled into the E-Trade platform, taking on Robinhood, an interesting battle going on there as well. And then we have E-Option taking on last year's winner, Tastyworks. Uh, all sorts of fun. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Colin, would you like me to give you an update on how you guys are faring in the tourney so far, sir? Yeah, yeah, I'd like to, I'd like to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's I think you guys are doing pretty well. I haven't checked uh, since yesterday. Again, we're only about a day or so into the voting, so all these things can go. I'll give you I'll give you guys a quick rundown of how the voting is going for all of them right now. <clears throat> Excuse me. In our first battle, we have TD taking on Sogo Trade. It is about two thirds going the way of TD right now. About a third for Sogo Trade. Number two, uh, the uh, the little firm that could Lightspeed taking it to Charles Schwab right now. Fifty five percent to about 44 percent or so out there so uh, interesting light speed in charge there number three fidelity taking on merrill edge uh, you'll be happy to know charles or <laughs> you'll happy to be happy to know that you you still have a job there sir uh colin because you guys are winning and winning handily 60 about two-thirds again two-thirds for fidelity versus merrill edge Does that surprise you colin or are you happy you guys are taking it to him I'm happy we're taking it to him. I'm a competitive guy, so. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I, I mentioned it to Greg. You guys got to get out there. The firms that do well on this are the ones who put all their resources behind it. Uh, we saw that work pretty well for Tasty last year. They put all of their resources behind it, and it helped carry them to victory. Uh, so I mentioned to Greg, you guys got to get out there with your social teams and everyone else and get them to get behind Fidelity because uh, you got to have some tough battles coming up in future rounds, Colin. Uh, you, guys, you guys got your work cut out for you here. Let's see. Number four battle, we've got uh, Trading Block taking it to Trade Station right now. About 61% to about 31%. We've got uh, Ally, 60, about 61% to about 31% over First Trade. IB, uh, you got to tell your buddy, you got to tell your buddy Lex, Andrew, has got to get in gear. Uh, IB taking it to Trade Hawk by Trade Year, 66% to about 33 Again, kind of similar percentages, two-thirds to a third for a lot of these battles here. Uh, E-Trade, about 67% versus 32% for Robinhood. So the Robinhood crew not mobilizing behind their team. And even more interesting, last year's champion, Tastyworks, uh, getting a little bit of uh, some business from E-Option. E-Option was beating them pretty handily. Uh, now it's exactly tied. Looks like some late votes just came in because it is exactly 50% for each. So uh, there we go. And these, if you like what your brokerage firm out there, listeners, you got to get mobilized. Get in there. Vote on the poll. At the end of the poll, you'll see a link that says, hey, register here for the fabulous prizes. You can register there. That will be your official registration. But guess what? We don't let it stop there. We're very generous here. So if you're out there, if you share it, if you like it on Facebook, if you share it on Facebook, if you like or retweet or share it on Twitter or stock tweets, even Instagram, uh, we will count all of those. So that gives you more that gives you more chits in the old hat, if you will, for when the prize drawing comes around. So the more you like, the more you retweet, the more you share, the more, the more you vote, all the good stuff you do, the more you do all of it, the more chances you have to win the fabulous prize. What do you say, Mr. Rocklaps? Maybe we'll get some fabulous prizes from the option pit as well. What do you think? I, I'm hoping we do have some. I think Mark's got to order more slinkies. Those are always popular. <laughs> slinkies. There we go. Uh, so there you go. Maybe we'll add an option pit slinky to the uh, to the prize. We still we still are building the prize pool list, but don't worry, it'll be good stuff like last year, probably even better. So stay tuned for that. I don't know, Colin. Any cool tchotchkes or giveaways you got from the active trader desk we could throw into the mix? Say, if you vote for Fidelity, what do you get? <laughs> 
Yeah, well, I'll, I'll have to look into that. <laughs> there you go. It's never. It's Chicago, so uh, purchasing votes is never is never looked down upon here in uh, in the in the <laughs> broker madness uh, competition. Let's look here really quickly. What else you guys have on the brain? Keep it up. This first round runs through the twenty sixth, listeners. So you got some time. If you haven't voted, get in there and vote. If you want to vote multiple times, we won't look askance at you. Uh, the survey platform may try to block you with different. Just use different devices. I think you'll you'll be good there. Uh, so if you want to, if you really like your broker, you want to vote a couple of times for him. We won't hold it against you. Uh, if you we really hate them, you want to vote against them a couple of times. We won't hold it against you either. And hey, there's more registrations to win. It's Chicago. Vote early. Vote often. Again, first round. We'll get to the elite eight after the 26. So if you want your broker to advance. You got to get in there. There's some tight battles going on right now. And this year, we're also mixing it up. So, Colin, brokers have asked us in the past, hey, well, you know, what do we in- win? In the past, it's been bragging rights and a nice pat on the back and the honor, the prestige of winning the tournament, which we know is the most prestigious award in options. But now we're going to add to that a little bit of hardware. So we're still in the process of designing and building what will the, the ultimate prize for the firm will be. But it could be a sweet trophy, maybe a really cool plaque, maybe one of those cool 3D holographic things. We don't, maybe a championship belt. I don't know. Something cool. Uh, so we're in the process of building that as well. So the firms will get some cool hardware coming their way as well. So everybody wins in broker madness. It's crazy. It's just like a palooza. Uh, except us, who's got to put out all these prizes and everything else. But we have the fun and joy of doing it, so it's fun. So again, round one goes through the 26th. Get out there and vote. Hey, have each of you voted? Andrew, have you voted? Uncle Mike, have you voted in the Broker Madness? Uh, I have. I voted once. I think because it popped up in anywhere I want to go. What was that, Mike? I have not as of yet. Still deciding where I want to go. Oh, <laughs> you going to stay with your old stomping grounds, your old friends? You going to go new? You got a lot of choices, sir. A lot of choices, a lot of battles to come. By the way, we have a little side. Fidelity. What was that? I'm leaning fidelity right now, of course. Well, of course, you know, you're talking to the guy, you know, he's got you, he's got you lured to the, to the dark side of the active trading strategy desk. You know, uh, I could see that. I could see why you want to lure, why you want to trend that way. And, uh, yeah, by the way, you have a little side pool going, listeners, as well. You can obviously vote in round one. We have a little side pool going. Who, pick who you think the ultimate winner will be as well. And if you get that right, uh, maybe you can win some extra fabulous prizes. So, oh, no ridiculous. I'm going to be giving out prizes for day, days after this thing is done. So take advantage of our largesse here. Go crazy. Get registered. Vote. Win some fun prizes. Um, let's see. Really quickly here. Get some listener feedback as well. Oh, your buddy there, <laughs> your buddy uh, F Contango. He he chimed in. He knows you and the Rock Lobster, or you and the Meatball, I should say. Love your Darden restaurants because he shared with us that uh, a link to <laughs> Darden restaurants surging after prof. He knows you guys love your. Uh, they're Olive Garden, aren't they? They are. I think they're Olive Garden and uh, the Red Lobster. So they. They serve fake lobster oh, and fake Italian all of, food. All of Mark's favorite things, all in one place. <laughs> <laughs> I think the stock's doubled since he hated it, by the way. <laughs> I don't think he was buying any flies on that one. No, no. I think he just, he hates it, and then he just ignores it. So there you go. <laughs> I love our listeners. They know what we hate, and they remind us of it all the time, which is, uh, which is fun. I, I love the keen-eared listeners uh, out there. Let's see here. J Dog, J Dog wants to know why don't you guys talk about unusual index activity? Yeah, you're right. Most of the stuff we talk about is in the broad single name equity options. That's for a couple of reasons. First off, large indexes like your SPX and your SPY, they're doing millions of contracts a day. Uh, so sometimes trying to find the aberrant or interesting 10,000 lot even or something like that is there's a lot of noise around that signal so it makes it kind of hard to parse secondly there's a lot of other things going on with some of these big particularly in the spx and things where there's a lot of other trades going on against them that you can't really see upstairs and and other things institutional otc that make it a little more interesting to analyze those things and then see we do do some of that uh, on volatility views, it's pretty much all index all the time. So we talk mostly VIX, but get into SPX and SPY and things like that, too. So we do reserve some of that for the volatility view show. But at the end of the day, you know, there's 50,000 lots going up in these products all the time. Not always interesting, not always unusual. It's kind of just par for the course out there. But if there is something 
significant. Like, stay tuned for Trifone a little bit. I think we'll be talking about some put rolls in Russell. Uh, so if there's something significant, we will talk about it. But uh, just, uh, it's not always on our radar. And a lot of our listeners, too, they like to hear the individual names because that's where they like to, they can really sink their teeth into those sometimes more than, hey, there's a 25,000 lot put roll in Spy. Uh, which is what's also going up on a lot of those products uh, a lot. Let's see here. Mm, okay, let's do one more. It will be nice. Um, Bob. Bob. Bob Lassie? Bob Lassie wants to know, what would you say is the number one go-to options strategy? Is it just buying a call or is it something more elaborate? Uh, Uncle Mike, you're always rolling puts out there. Do you agree with Bob Lassie? Is it just buying a call? Uh, I would say it might be a little bit more elaborate than that, but uh, it depends on kind of where you're going to do. I think that uh, uh, there's a lot of roles that go on and uh, roles are something that make option traders uh, manage risk. And I would say a little bit more elaborate, but uh, I'm kind of more of a basic guy myself, typically. Colin, same question for you. You probably get this a lot on the strategy desk over there. Uh, what would you say, in your estimation, is the number one bit of options strategy out there, sir, in terms of what people use the most? Uh, you know, it's the, probably the most common strategy we, we see are usually someone, whether they're, they're selling puts or, or cover calls are, are particularly uh, common strategies. I, I guess I want to take another angle on that. Is, uh, um, something I would say would be a go-to option strategy is not necessarily beginning with a particular strategy, but start with the outlook, which actually will pinpoint which strategy makes sense. A lot of times clients get caught up in just using this strategy to fit, uh, basically use this tool for every situation, you know, even a, you know, a screwdriver to bang in a nail instead of using a hammer. So I uh, just want to take that from another perspective of saying, you know, start with your outlooks, have an outlook volatility, price, and time frame, and it will help you arrive at, at the strategy, which will make more sense from there. Uh, so I guess that's the way I'd, I'd like to answer that. Spoken like a true representative of a strategy desk. Uh, <laughs> you have a career in <laughs> politics ahead of you, Colin. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And Mr. Rock Lobster, what's your go-to? You think it's buying a call, covered call, short put, the iron fly ratio swap? What's your call, sir? So is this what... I like to do, or what the common the. I don't. I like don't think do. he's writing in to ask what is the rock lobster's favorite strategy. I think he's asking more general terms than that. I think the most common thing is the buy right, uh, and then probably after that, people just like to buy calls. That's that would go be like my one. Two. Yeah, I'm down with you. I think I think the covered call is uh, gets a lot of love out there. It's a great entry point for a lot of new stock traders to come into the option space. They say, hey, I can get some income. I can create my own dividend. What a, what a crazy, freewheeling, crazy thing that is. Uh, so I, I'm kind of with you. I don't have the numbers in front of me for exact numbers, but if it's not the covered call, it's up there in terms of what is the number one go-to strat. Then you got all your other stuff going on, hedging with puts, buying your crazy calls, all sorts of fun stuff. I'm going to lean I'm gonna lean the covered call way as well. All right, let's keep rolling into our final segment. It is time to go around the block. It's time to tell you what we'll be watching on our trading screens until the next episode. It's time for Around the Block. All right, welcome to Around the Block, the portion of the show where we tell you what's on our radar for the rest of the week into the old weekend. Colin, you're our, you're our newcomer here, so we'll start with you. What are you keeping an eye on for the rest of the week, sir? Well, one thing that's really kind of capturing my eye, and I know this is, you know, kind of short-sighted, but, uh, you know, Nike releasing earnings uh, uh, this evening, so that'll be interesting to watch, uh, especially with it. Uh, right now it's trading uh, 87 spots on five. And uh, looking at what the expected move being around, I would say about 440. So it's going to be interesting to see what, what that over action, uh, overnight action is going to happen, the reaction from the market, especially with it creating uh, that new 52-week high. Uh, just recently this week. So it'll be interesting to see how it reacts on that earnings release. And um, one more thing is, uh, I know this is kind of a plain Jane answer, but uh, I still want to see the uh, the market's reaction to uh, the Fed, um, you know, leaving those rates unchanged, how it's going to continue to react. Because as you guys have pointed out, it's been a, a pretty interesting reaction so far. So I kind of want to see how much uh, fall through this has. 
Yeah, you're right. Earning season still not done with us. We got Nike popping off after the bell today. That's kind of one of the biggest names left left in the week here. You've got tomorrow. We've got uh, Tiffany uh, before the open on Friday as well. So still a few names to pay attention to. If you like all that stuff, of course, check out the earnings move and earnings move results reports we have over there on theoptionsinsider.com. Gives you data on all these names and a bunch more. The straddle, what they're expecting, what previous quarters delivered, all that fun stuff. So if you like earnings analysis, and we know you do, then check out those reports. All right, Mr. Uncle Mike, sir, in addition to tanning oil and staying away from the sun, what is on your radar for the rest of the week? Well, I think that we want to see if we get any follow-through from this rally. I think with the Fed <clears throat> doing what it did, uh, it'll be interesting to see if this is just a quick re gut reaction from the market or whether we can follow through on it. Uh, what I really like right now is that we're in a lower vol environment. Uh, so if you are looking to take a flyer on things, uh, buying calls won't be quite ex as expensive as it would be uh, if vol were higher. So it's one of the benefits of, this, of a market like this is that if options are what you believe are in it more inexpensive than usual, which I believe they are, personally, but I may be wrong, of course, uh, then uh, this could be a, an option buyer's market at this point in time. We will see. And Mr. Rock Lobster, same question for you, sir. In addition to your getting your libertarian uh, knickers in a twist over breakups, what's, uh, what's on your radar, sir? <laughs> Liber I was trying to head on back libertarian knickers in a twist. That's pretty gotta, substantial. Got to keep up with this show. It keeps growing, you know? Uh, it, I'll tell you. you what, the... the um, the verbal flourishes never end on the Option Insider Radio Network. Uh, real simple, um, dopey stuff. Apple 200, um, I, this, this chip rally. Chips, chips, chips. All of a sudden, uh, anybody notice, but the Qs are only 13 bucks from an all-time high? And it, $13, that doesn't feel like very much. I think they are 155 not very long ago. Tech... If we're going to lead, that's going to be tech. Certainly not going to get it from oil and gas. Um, so technology still, I think I'm looking at also Chinese sensitive companies. I know this is weird, but I use like Tyson Foods, as you know. I just figure um, they make chickens. Um, chicken's popular in China. So it's that stock has made kind of a rally uh, lately. Um, the better the trade news, I think it's a good rumor, trade rumor-esque type stock, and it's having kind of a power move today. Um, not quite as good as the chip stocks, but pretty good for a company that makes chickens. Um, so that kind of, okay, if it's sort of commodity sensitive, Chinese sensitive, um, that's the stuff. Uh, that stuff got blistered pretty badly. So um, looking how those are going also, you know, if the chip industry is doing good, technology is doing good. So those are like the biggies. And, you know, a, a, a nice little drift into the 12 handle and VIX, some ball settling. Um, but again, until this trade thing gets over, I doubt if we can do it. I think any move into the 12 handle and VIX is pretty much a, a not necessarily a load up on ball signal, but certainly get rid of some of your. Uh, get rid of some of your uh, like your short wall positions, at least lighten up there because we have bounced off that, you know, negative frozen zone so many times uh, in 2018. Can't really count um, how many times just cannot break into it and get to what I would call the lower end, which was like a 9% wall. Um, it's, <laughs> you might as well forget it. So those are, that's what I'm looking at. And that's it. 12 handle. That would be something. And you're right. Yeah. Yes. That, if it gets to that point, people are hitting me up again saying, hey, I'm back in the VXX uh, put trade, which that maybe is a signal uh, in the broad the broad space because it's back below 30 again. How long people have been waiting for that, you know? Uh, so, yeah, maybe if it hits that 12 handle, definitely maybe uh, at least take some of them off the table, I hope, because uh, you don't want to get caught holding the bag like a lot of people did last year. All right. That music means, unfortunately, we've come to the end of an epic journey through the world of options. Colin, congratulations. You survived, sir. See, it wasn't that scary, right? Not too bad at all. I really <laughs> enjoy myself. All right, Colin, if people are intrigued by the stuff you were laying down here on the show, they want to learn more, maybe they want to reach out to the strategy desk themselves, where should they go? What should they do? 
Yeah, so we have a lot of information available in our Learning Center on our website. Uh, within our Learning Center, we have classrooms that are also available to them. So if you have any questions or would like to set up an appointment with our Trade and Strategy Desk, just contact Fidel as you normally would or just contact using that 1-800-544-5115 and just ask to speak to the Trading Strategy Desk and set up an appointment with us. We'd love to help out. Ask to speak for Colin specifically. Tell him you heard him on the show. It'll be a fun. It'll make his. <laughs> That's great. It'll make his week. So uh, make sure you do that and check it out. Yeah, I mean, not a, lot of, not a lot of firms have these types of desks you can take advantage of. So Fidelity's got one. Take advantage of it if you are a Fidelity customer. If you're not, check them out. See what you're missing over there. And Uncle Mike, we're missing you here in the frozen north, but I think you're happy to be down there in the frozen south. And if I want a money manager, an asset manager for me, an advisor, sir, who's paying attention to my accounts even when he's in Mexico. Where should I go? What should I do, sir? By all means, go to my website at stcharleswealth.com. And also, if you'd like to learn a little bit more about uh, what we do in person, I do have an investing club, the St. Charles Investment Club. Uh, You can go on meetup.com to learn a little bit more about that. We're having our next meeting on April 11th at my office at the world headquarters of St. Charles Wealth Management, 303 East Main Street. There you go. Skippy's, gyros, and lemonade guaranteed for all attendees. Over the, by the way, we have something down here I noticed the other day downtown, Uncle Mike. It's called Pinky's Gyros and Beef. So no lemonade. So it's almost as cool, but not quite as cool. If they had lemonade, I was going to I was going to I was going to get some and send it to you. Go forth and enjoy your vacation, sir. And last but not least, Mr. Rock Lobster, sir. If I'm intrigued by this vol thing, maybe I want to learn a little bit more. Where should I go? What should I do? Uh, you go to our website and get our VIX Made Easy or VXX Made Easy courses. Uh, I can't guarantee you that will save you at least what the course costs you, but that's pretty much what everybody tells me. Some people tell me it saved them a lot more than that. Uh, we also have an April class coming uh, this Saturday, I believe the 6th, April 6th. Um, and we'll be talking about volatility and VIX. So... If you want to learn how it works, actually, you can get that class and a month of option pit for seven bucks. So um, that's our little special trial. If you have an interest, let us know. Um, send me a note, Andrew, at optionpit.com. Seven bucks? I got seven bucks I got, for a month. I got it's, seven bucks burning a hole in my pocket right now. Where do I go? What do? How can I possibly spend this? Optionpit.com, listeners is the place to go. Ask for the Rock Lobster. He'll be he'll be thrilled as well. And on behalf of the Rock Lobster and Colin, making his first appearance here on the show, well done. And Uncle Mike, who's enjoying a nice, well-deserved vacation, but still keeping an eye on your money. And indeed myself. I want to thank all of you for downloading, streaming, subscribing, for all the fun stuff that you do. Keep it coming. We'll be coming right back in a little bit, about 25 minutes. So if you'd like some more equity talk, we got some for you in terms of TWIFO as well as all sorts of commodity volatility, your questions, everything else. So if you're listening live, join us back again in about 25 minutes for TWIFO. Otherwise, we'll see you back here next week for more of the Option Block. The preceding program was a production of the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider or via questions at the options insider.com. 